No more business funding for minority owned businesses. No more business funding for women owned businesses. Or how about small businesses in general? In 2023, should we be having this discussion? I don't know about you, but if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm going to share my personal outlook on this entire thing. Hey, my name is Dominic Jackson, CEO of Guarantee Financial Consulting. So let's get into this. A recent ruling from a Texas federal judge has sparked a contentious debate around the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's Small Business Lending Rule, or the CFPB. To understand the full scope of this issue, we really need to hear both sides of this story. Now, the Dodd-Frank Act instructs the CFPB to collect data on small business lending. Their goal? To prevent discrimination and to ensure fair access to credit for women-owned, minority-owned, and small businesses in general. On March 30, 2023, the CFPB issued the final rule implementing these changes. The rule requires financial institutions to collect and report certain data on credit applications for small businesses, particularly those of women and minorities. The rule also sets guidelines for protecting privacy, restricting and sharing of certain demographic data, maintaining records, enforcing provisions, and a lot more. And it's all aimed at creating a fair and equitable lending landscape. Now, to support understanding and compliance with the rule, the CFPB is providing resources, including summaries, info sheet charts, um, and a filing instructions guide for the first year of this data collection. But this move hasn't been well received by all. Matter of fact, the Texas Bankers Association, the American Bankers Association, and McAllen based Rio Bank have been pushing back. They argue that the 1071 final rule could place significant burdens on community banks and that this has the potential to harm lending to small businesses and minority and women owned entrepreneurs. Matter of fact, rather than advancing the goal of growing the number of loans made to minority and women owned businesses, Though the CFPB has now issued a rule that will hinder that aim, the plaintiffs claim. The ABA, which is representing small, regional, and large banks, they safeguard about $18.7 trillion in deposit, and they extend another $12.2 trillion in loans. In April, the Rio Bank and the TBA filed a lawsuit against the CFPB alleging that the rules requirement for lenders to capture detailed lending decisions, demographic data um, would edge small lenders out of the market. Moreover, they challenged the Bureau's authority and its funding structure, citing possible violations into the separations of powers principles in the U.S. Constitution. Now, as the Supreme Court prepares to hear the case with a decision unlikely until 2024, this conflict underscores the difficulty of balancing fair access to credit with a sustainable lending environment. This is extremely important in this entire thing. So let's break it down even a little bit farther. The CFPB is stating they want to collect more data to make sure that minority and women-owned businesses for the majority are not being discriminated against. Now, there the other side of the argument is that by putting in collecting certain demographic data, that is actually going to make it the opposite. Now we're going to know what race someone may be, what gender they may identify with. They're going to be collecting certain data or be required to collect certain data that they never used to before. 
And so it's interesting to see kind of, or even hear both sides of the equation, because what happens if they actually have to collect this data? Now, could they bring this into their thought pattern? Could they bring this into whether they get a chance to say, no, I don't like this because of this, or this is the law. I can't discriminate against them. Now, as much as we all know and would like to believe that that never happens, we all know it does. And so I am on the side of actually the Bankers Association. I don't know that it's a good idea to have this information. I don't know that we should be collecting that data and it shouldn't matter what color we are, what sex we are, what religion we have. None of those things should take place when it comes to business lending. Is our business properly structured? Does the business have revenue? Is there collateral there for the lender? All of those things that should matter, those are the things that we need to be paying attention to. How do we help minority owned and women owned businesses get the proper set up, get the proper education, get the proper tools to make sure that we're helping them grow and build their businesses, not what color we are, what sex we are, where we live, how much we make personally. I don't think those things are going to help us in the long run. So my opinion is that we build our businesses the correct way. We structure our businesses the right way. We do the things necessary to when we apply for a loan, it doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter who we are. We qualify because we are a legit business. We look like a legit business and they want to loan us the money because we are going to be successful. So that is my personal take on this entire thing. Now, I want to hear your opinions on this. I would love to get your insight or your thoughts around this entire thing. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about how we can help you build your business, how we can change things. What conversations do we need to have? How can we get involved? So go ahead, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all of those things, but most importantly, comment. Let's talk about this and have a good discussion around this entire thing. I look forward to talking with you and let's get it.